Hey guys, welcome back to another installment of HairTube. Today we're here with Emma Kate. Hello. Um, and we're going to do a great haircut. The haircut we're doing today is a long laid cut. You guys request it a lot. Um, however, you like to see a little bit different in terms of the finishing and styling. So we're going to take some length off. We're going to shape and frame it around the face a little bit, really open the face up. And we're going to finish with that beautiful waved uh, curled look at the end. So. Uh, sit back, relax. This will be a quick one, maybe 30 minutes or so. Um, but unlike the other episodes, you're actually going to see me dry and finish the hair. So I'm sorry if it's boring to some of you, but a lot of you have requested it. So we're going to get started. Are you nervous? Nope. I'm not nervous. So Emma Kate came in during the week and had some colour done. So today I've decided to prepare her hair for the haircut with the um, Colour Last Shampoo and Conditioner. It's a little bit um, uh, dry on the ends. It's something that tends to happen when we lighten hair. Um, we did use a Bond Ultimate, but I think it's um, just nice to seal the ends with some Colour Last uh, treatment, so we'll get started. Here we are back from the basin. Um, I would normally comb out hair at the basin, but our basins are quite petite, so we don't really have the room to comb it out. So just use my magic water as always. Uh, and I'm just going to section by section, comb this from ends first and into root. We always start with my magic water. Buy a large hydrosaur spray, it's the daily leave-in tonic. I spray it in every single person's hair before I start cutting it. It's amazing just to really help prepare the hair, just to have the, the comb gliding through. And what I find is it actually doesn't affect the way the hair dries, it doesn't feel heavy or weighted at all. You guys often ask about the scissors and the comb I'm using. Um, for long hair, I always use a minimum six inch blade. I just find that for me, it works a little bit better. These are the Excellent Edges Premium. Um, for me, it's one of the best, if not the best scissor in the world um, for blunt cutting. Um, it has a mountain edge blade, it's very durable. It can cut through large amounts of hair, super sharp, made out of amazing metal and they can be continuously sharpened and maintained and serviced. And you'll get, I think I've had this one now for probably three years and I do a lot of haircuts so good scissor if you want it you can grab it on my website and also the carbon comb again I like to use a long comb because when I'm when I'm cutting long hair I often use combs as like a ruler so that for me the longer the comb the better it is in short hair I'll use a shorter comb so I can break this haircut down into probably three or four um, steps. First is we're going to cut the baseline. Today I'm going to do a traditional baseline. For me traditional baseline is when we part the hair, section the back out, nice strong ends and then we cut the side on the side. We don't bring it into the back. If you want to bring it into the back that's great. It's just going to leave points in the front. For today I'm just going to cut it off on the side. After we do the baseline we're going to work into the long graduation around the face then once that's done, we're going to come in and do the back. The fourth step of the cutting is obviously the texturising and then we'll get into the styling. So let's start. Oh, the clips. Same deal, excellent edges clips. Amazing. Really good, really durable. They're made out of carbon. They slide in the hair really well. It's actually got quite a, a good amount of tension without having too much. So you can actually clip away large sections of hair, which is good. Some people don't like twisting sections out. It doesn't really bother me that much. However you control the hair, however's best for you is great. So I often talk about sectioning. Sectioning can make your haircut far more accurate but I also believe that if you become 
let's say, um, uh, not obsessive, but too much sectioning for me can actually make it inaccurate. So the way I determine how I'm going to section the hair is by the quality of the scissor, can it cut accurately through that amount of hair and can I control that amount of hair with my scissor comb and um, obviously my hand. When I do the last section, slightly forward head position, just so we don't get any graduation poking through on those ends. We want them to be nice and blunt. See how I'm using the comb as a ruler? It's a very effective way of doing it. Just making sure that we're not cutting on our fingers either. Make sure you cut above, sorry, below. Otherwise you're going to get little finger bellies in your baseline. You're not going to get that nice crisp finish. Comb is great for this. It's pretty good. When I'm doing the sides, I'm just going to take just a tiny little bit there as a guide. Not much to cut. Again, I'm being quite generous with my sections. For me, I'm able to control the hair and I have a premium scissor that makes really light work of getting through that hair. If you're doing thick hair, um, I would absolutely recommend you take smaller sections. But let's not forget also that we're working in a commercial setting and we also need to be efficient. Um, accuracy is important, but we also need to be able to make sure we can do this haircut in and out the door in under an hour. And that includes the, the styling at the end. Sort of check balance. I usually grab it just above the ears. This side's a little bit longer. And if I look, it's probably because I haven't gone right to that corner. Yeah, there it is there, see? I haven't gone right to this edge here. And that's where that inaccuracy comes from. And that will be perfect. Oh, now this side's shorter. No, only joking. <laughs> it's perfect. All right. So how do you find the best place to part the hair? I'm often asked this. I like to work with people's natural hairlines. So if you could put your head forward a little bit gorgeous. So you can see you start to watch the hairline pattern. If you were to part the hair on the right hand side, so our right, your left, it's gonna be very hard to make this to sit that way because the hair's recessed deeper. So I always try and go where the hair, the hairline has the deepest recess. And if you comb it all back, and then just very gently push it forward, generally you're gonna find where it's best to part it. So that's where we're gonna part the hair from today. However, if your client wants to be able to have flexibility with her parting, I would suggest parting it in the middle and explaining to her that 
If she wears it on one side or the other, it is gonna look shorter. And that's okay because it's gonna look like you've got a shorter bang in there. Um, but if they wanna wear it with a set part all the time, then it's best to cut it where it goes naturally. So I've asked Jimmy to elevate the camera. So you guys are actually, I don't know if you can see me, but you're above my shoulder. So this is the best way to show you guys how I create these shapes. I'm gonna use two combs. So what I like to do is, to create this, we need to make sure that we create concave, not convex. So it's really important that when we're cutting this shape that the hair is projected and elevated to the same point. What happens a lot of the times is we start to go through the front of the hair and we end up doing this. My fingers are pointed diagonal back, therefore I'm gonna cut all this length off. We actually need to have them pointing diagonal forward. It's really hard to get your head around, but it's very important. So we're gonna aim for something about there. So all this hair must come up to this point. Otherwise we're gonna end up cutting it off there and you're gonna end up with like a page boy where it goes back. So we'll start with this side. And what's tricky about doing uh, off-centered parts is we're gonna to have to create the same shape on this side with a third of the hair. So we've got two thirds of the hair is onto the left-hand side or our left, your right and then the other third is on the other side. So we need to be able to, you need to guys need to understand how we go about doing that. So I'll talk to you about that when we get to that side. But let's start with our primary side. So just, um, it's a slightly diagonal back section. Some people would argue and say it's vertical, but it is slightly diagonal back. And I'm just gonna spin you just a couple of centimeters that way. So you guys can see the angle I've got my comb on. So we're gonna aim for just below the chin. We wanna be able to make sure that we can get this back in a ponytail so we have some versatility. And, and I think um, a lot of girls these days are quite active and when they're active, they like to, you know, exercising, they like to have the, the hair tied up. Very important. Here we go. Parallel to your parting and really need to over direct the hair. So I'm gonna try and aim for it to go over my shoulder. So it's going back this way. Don't drop it, really important that you don't drop it. Pick this hair up to the same point. Again, over directing. Don't drop it. All at once, now you guys will understand why I like using long combs. Look how easy that, that is when you do that. Really, really over directing and we wanna make sure that we haven't cut off our baseline and it just fell out there. So we now have, no longer have to worry about getting that, that issue where you end up cutting off all the length. I'll do one more section on this side so you can see because once there's a bit more hair um, incorporated in that, in that cutting line, you'll be able to see the shape a little bit better. Again, not squashing the hair. Don't do this. Don't squash the hair together like this. That's, that's gonna end in disaster. You really wanna have it spread well over the plane of the comb. Again, which is why I like using the long comb. Fingers gently behind, swinging the comb. Just dropped it one sec. If it's too much, just pull a little bit out. There it is there. Again, I'm cutting back over my shoulder. Don't drop it. Don't drop it. You can see our baseline's here. We're not cutting that off. And again, we haven't take. So your client's gonna see this falling off and they're like, you know, you're cutting all my hair off, but we're not. Because this is not one centimetre short, not one millimetre than when we cut our baseline. We'll do one more section, which takes us back to where we would have had the hair sectioned up for our baseline. So we're probably gonna start running out of hair. You like that? That's, I think that's called hair bay. <laughs> Again, making sure you can see it's spread out. Don't bunch it up. Have it spread evenly along the plane of the comb. If you bunch it up, 
you're going to end up cutting the incorrect angle. Here we go again, swinging. I'm almost cutting. I'm almost cutting a straight line back towards Emma Kate's head. Just chin this way, be gorgeous. That way, perfect. Makes it easier for me to over direct. Head position is very important too. So I have um, many discussions with hairdressers about is this graduation, is it layering? The best way to describe this technique if in hairdresser terms, it is graduation if I'm cutting it here. And when would I do that? I would do that when the hair is quite fine. Because the closer we go to zero, the more solid the hair becomes. The further we project it away, the softer it falls. So it's very important that you identify what hair type. So if you had really, really curly hair that's thick, you can do this technique, but we project it up here. So it'd actually be, it'd actually be all the way right up the top here, like this and we'd be doing it that way. And what happens is when it falls, it's gonna fall very, very light and gentle. So you don't have to then go back and thin and texturize out a design line. Because when you put texture on a design line, the hair will grow out really poorly and it'll go frizzy, especially on curly hair. So for thick hair, you project it higher, which then technically becomes layering. But if you're projecting the hair below 90 degrees, it's graduation. So what's this technique called? I think if it's Below 90, it's long graduation. And if it's above 90, it's long layering. And I would say this is um, over-directed layering. So we're over-directing the hair to retain length. So over-directing means we're cutting to retain length this way. And I'm making sure that this hair down here, which is really projected out here, gets elevated back up to that original design line. Because if you don't, you're gonna cut the length off. So I really wanna project it all back up and cut it all on the same plane, over directing, and we've got that tiny little bit there, which you're just gonna nick off. You set perfect seamless layers. So that's the easy part. The hard part is, stop, hang on one sec. We've gotta go back one step. If you're not going to layer the back after this, you need to keep going all the way through. So just spin around. You would need to then take this all the way through and bring all this forward. And you would need to explain to your client that it is gonna lay the back. But because we're gonna do some nice layering in the back, I'm not gonna, not gonna bother going all the way back because we're just gonna cut hair that we've already cut. The hard part. So how do we... How do we, with only that much hair, make the shape the same as when we have this much. We have to intentionally leave one side longer than the other. So we're gonna intentionally leave this side longer, but we need to replicate the angle. And I'll show you how you do it. So I'm gonna really spin my body right around. We're actually going to exaggerate this even more. You guys see that? So I've actually cut away from my finger. And remember I said before we're cutting almost a straight line. And there it is there. I drop this side because I need to check it. Bring this all the way up. And all you need to make sure is we don't cut here, that's your baseline. You cut your baseline. Head straight for me. That's at the camera, this way. Beautiful. If you cut that baseline out, it means that you're not over-directing it enough. Because the, the philosophy behind me cutting hair this way is to join this point and that point. So we have to connect from here to here. And the only way to do that is over-directing. Back this way a bit, perfect. Here we go again. There it is there. There. That 
it was going to happen, but I got a spare. <laughs> Someone said, make sure you wash your comb. I will wash the combs. I will wash the combs from now on. But my floor is so clean here in the salon, I swear you could eat your lunch off it. Because I have an amazing team that insists on working in a very, very, very clean professional environment. Okay, over directing. There's our point in there, can you see it? That's where we need to cut to. So that is our angle with our two combs, yeah? Lucky last. This way, yep. Make sure we're elevating it and projecting it back to that original spot. So I've done the front, now it's time to layer the back. So I'm gonna spin around this way so again you guys can see this sectioning. So what we're gonna do so we're going to try and connect here and the front. So, if you could put your head up, gorgeous. You can see here, you have this angle coming through. There. And we're just going to nick that off a little and leave that there. Okay, let's start again. Good, action. Yep. So I've just finished the front. Let's just spin Emma Kate around and we'll see if you can see what we've done here. Let's put my scissors in my back pocket, right. I'll just loosen this up a little bit and you can see that we're going to create, it feels right anyway, we're going to create that nice shape in the front there so you see that coming through, It'll be really pretty. Now it's time to lay the back, so forward head position just slightly. Again when I lay the back I take into consideration how much hair someone has um, and I don't want to overlay this haircut. So we're just going to do it would vary from haircut to haircut, but for this particular example, we're going to do long layers. So you're not going to see a lot of layering in the back. I want to see a little bit of variation, but not too much. So the way I make sure I retain weight in the hair when layering, and I know that sounds ridiculous because we lay our hair to remove weight, but we want to retain weight on the ends. So I'm going to project the hair so that the baseline falls out. It's starting to fall out already. And then, we're going to make a really nice angle towards the ceiling. You can see why long combs are so good for long hair, because you can control so much. There, the baselines fell out, and I think that's a good amount of weight on the ends. So, we're just going to angle that quite acute I want it to go right up almost cutting vertically just a slight angle there don't drop it just make sure that the hair that did fall out doesn't reach there after you've cut that angle because and it does a little bit you can see that just going to nick that little bit off there and we've created a point and you can see the point here Let's let it fall. And I think that's got a nice amount of variation. You can see we've kept a lot of that weight in the end. Now you can work quite efficiently because you've got your um, guideline. I like to work left, right, left. So I'll do this side, that side, this side, that side, it's just how I 
I'd do it. Um, that's, there's no right or wrong way, provided that you follow the same rules. Don't cut into your guideline. Make sure your projections are the same, your angles are the same. And um, for those of you who are wondering, I am bringing it back into the middle. I'm bringing it back towards that middle section, using that as my guide, because we don't have hair growing out of the side of the, the neck. No one does. And if we follow this around too much, we'll end up with a big hole on the shoulder and we want that nice full baseline. On the last section, I always like to pick it all up together. Just to check it. I'll swing Emicade around just so you can see the back. You can see me bringing it in to the center. Yeah, and then the angle. Again, don't bunch the hair up. Make sure it's spread out over the plane of the comb. You don't want to do this. Don't want to bunch it in. And quite soft through the comb. There it is there, last section. Yep. Beautiful. I'm going to tie the sides in and we'll be ready to dry this off. Over directing the sides into the back, there probably won't be a lot to cut because as I mentioned, yep, um, when we layer the front and shape the front as we do, you actually do layer this part of the hair. This is just about having synergy and tying the back to the front and the front to the back. So there's not that much there at all. There's our original guide in there, you can see it, and this is a hair that overhangs. And I don't think this part will reach, but we'll check anyway. No. Nothing, okay. The hair's drying out. Let's give it a little mist of the daily leaving tonic. And then we're going to use this beautiful, beautiful oil, exquisite oil. Literally just a tiny little bit, never on the scalp. I rub it through my fingers as well. That way we can work it through the ends of the hair just put that in there and then I'm going to give it a quick blow dry and then we're going to style it with a waving wand but I might just prep it it's beautiful the shape's amazing you can already see it I'm going to use this amazing mousse it's just a good old fashioned mousse a little bit of volume builder this is just so, we're gonna place this around just a little bit in here through the hairline. You can see me just running it through there. This is where we're going to need some support um, with our movement. I don't know why, but hairdressers have forgotten about how bloody great, how strange that, how bloody great mousse is. Especially in wet hair, and then we dry it in. I just Put it in the ends while the hair's moist before it dries out. Yeah, it's got some movement in it too. It's drive away, like it's like beachy at the moment, isn't it? It's quite cute. <laughs> we'll probably leave it like that. No, we're not going to that. Dry it off. So I pre-dried the hair a little bit. Now I'm going to go through with a large round brush and just smooth it out before we finish with our final shape. You can see the shape quite clearly now, we're giving it a blowout. Um, so I need to go through and I need to check my shape and I'd use the Crocodile Scissor from Excellent Edges to do that and you'll see why. Because I don't want to be in a situation where I'm cutting into my 
design line, but I want to be able to just nick off those little pieces that are going to poke out from underneath, and you'll see that now. You'll see these little pieces here, and they just poke out from underneath. We just really want to make that quite strong, especially you'll see through here. See all these little, that's just caused from the layering. So what we're doing is we're using a, a graduation projection to create a more defined shape through there. And this is a really great scissor to do it. see there make sure you pull it just turn your head to the side just make sure you pull it over the ear so forward like this So I check that shape. Now here's a little tip. We'll go back to our straight blade. Just in case, Emma, Emma Kate and I had a conversation off camera about where she wears her hair, she always parts it there. But just in case she ever wants to flip it, what I'm gonna do is take a section right over the top through the middle, just like this. And I'm gonna really gently and straight point cut the hair. We're going in about three quarters of an inch. And you'll see that falls a little bit softer there. Just got that heaviness out of there as well. Make sure we grab both sides. Do it this way. I'm standing behind so you guys can see, but I would stand this way. We want to make sure we've got that shape there in the front, that V that we spoke about. Yep. And then just very gently soften that, not too much. Beautiful. So this is the fourth step to recap. Step one baseline. Step two was the shape in the front. Step three was the layering. Step four is what we're doing now, which is the personalizing, editing and texturizing. Um, it's very hard in my opinion to teach people that because I think that's a creative aspect of what we do. But what you can teach is what is technically correct. And once you know what is and isn't technically correct, you break the rules however you want. Because once you understand the rules, you can do uh, pretty much anything. Well, it just gives the colour a whole new dimension. There's a lot more variation through there. It's beautiful. Head back gorgeous. Let's just see how that stacks. It's quite nice and soft. You look good. Spin you around. Yeah, so you can see, you guys can see the shape that's created. It's that that, that shape that you guys have been asking me to do. So what we're gonna do now, is we're gonna put some bend in it with a tong. 
and then you'll be ready to go. Awesome. The new Emma Kate. <laughs> no rocket science with the sectioning. Got our um, our wand here. It's a um, it's a round wand. It's um, there's many different wands you can um, use to create shape. I've chosen this one based on the length of the hair. So one section. Let's just make that a bit neater because we should. What I do is um, depending again on how much hair is I just split it in three. One, two, three, and I always start in the middle. So today we're going to do a vertical wave um, because we want it to be like this. You can do a horizontal wave if you like. Um, that's up to you guys, but for this cut, I think this works best. You might see on my um, left hand I have a heat glove. just allows me to hold the hair closer to the iron and I can touch it for a short period of time without getting burnt but I mean if you hold it there it's still going to burn your hand about probably do about 10 to 12 seconds per section And I'm um, that meticulous, I actually time it on my watch. So if you often see me glancing up at my watch when I'm doing this, um, that's exactly what I'm doing. The other thing is you can probably see some steam coming off the hair. And the reason why that is, is because if I'm gonna use a thermal styling tool after I blow dry the hair, I try not to dry it too much because um, we don't wanna completely dehydrate the hair and take all the moisture out because you need moisture in hair for movement and if you, start with a base that is really, really dry. You'll then have to spray it with a thermal styling um, product to be able to get some hold in it. 10 to 12 seconds. If you go through and you see it's uh, not giving you the shape that you want, you can leave it for a little bit longer. Next section. Again, like all sectioning, depending on the, the length of the hair, the thickness of the hair, and uh, what exactly you're doing, your sections can vary quite dramatically. I like this one because it's got that little um, foot on it, so you can sit down on your, on your trolley without it um, getting too hot and melting things that are plastic. So as I go up towards the head becomes broad, napes leaner, I'm gonna do four sections. One, two, three, four. I wanna make sure that we're projecting that hair at 90 degrees so we can get vertical movement in the hair. see why I've got the glove on because I've actually you know I'm holding the hair right there don't want to burn your hand okay so to get the shape that we're looking around the face we need to actually take a diagonal back section again the one goes in we're winding it away I like to do this just to give it a little bit of um, smoothing and then I'm aiming a distance that's going to fall about where I want that bend to be so it's just underneath the eye socket. Again 10 to 15 seconds where the hair's shorter and it's not wrapped around as much you'll be able to see it and we're going to get that beautiful bend there. Again vertical section away from the face And I'm literally watching the second hand on my watch and doing exactly 10 to 15 seconds. 
I think um, we need to be aware that these tools, if you know, held on the hair for a prolonged period of time, will cause damage, and we don't want to do that. You can see that um, the sections are getting higher up into the crown, and they're a little more relaxed, I would say. I'm a little bit more relaxed about it as I get up towards the crown because I don't want to have any distinct partings in the, um, in the finished look. And if you dry everything with a distinct parting, you're going to get lines as the hair dries. For all those people out there that are right-handed, um, I struggle with the left-hand side and um, the way I do it is probably a little less orthodox, but it's the only way I can do it and make sure that I get the shape that I want. So I stand on this side, again taking a diagonal back section. I then stand behind and we wrap it this way. And again, I'm smoothing, smoothing out to about where we need it to be, which is about there. Wrap it around and we hold it. The beautiful thing is in my salon, you guys can't see, but there's mirrors everywhere, so I can uh, look over there, see what I'm doing. I've seen some disasters happen around the face. You need to be careful. You touch someone's skin with one of these and they are gonna have a permanent scar and that's not nice. I saw it happen once when I was at technical college and I, um, yeah, it's not a, nice, not a nice thing, so. Make sure that your client's still, no mobile phones. Something actually in my salon when I'm working on clients probably worth mentioning is I do eliminate all possible distractions. So I politely ask them to put their mobile phones away. I don't allow them to read magazines because while we're creating their haircut and their and the style, um, they need to be involved in that as well. And if they're distracted, it ultimately is going to affect the result um, to which I'm going to be blamed for. So. I want to make sure I eliminate any possibility of it, it not going right. And one of them I find in, in our salon is mobile phones, are, or as you call them around the world, cellular phones, they are a massive distraction. We've got one more section we're going to take horizontally across the top of the head. And then there's a, another little tip that I do, which helps with the framing around the face. place this down, set it down here for a sec. So when I do this, what we need to do is we pick, pick up this part, and we pull it back, and we make sure we're doing it on the right side. Gives it a little bit of volume first. And again, just making sure that the shape is at the length that we want, which is there. The only thing about being right handed is uh, sometimes the cord hits your client in the head. Lucky that they don't hurt. Someone may one day make a cordless one of these. Wouldn't that be nice? This will split in two. Actually, no, we won't. 
just going to run this on the top. And underneath. Be careful of the forehead. And then. Oh. Yep. Slide it down to do the rest. A little bit tricky once you've got that shape in the front. Now we're just going to curl those very ends. You can see why this glove comes in handy. Great. Now we'll dress it out. So we're just going to soften it with our hands just a little bit. Like I said, just really, really gently with the hands. Let's have a look how this shape looks. And then we're going to use a little bit of product just to finish it. That's really good. Great shape. A little bit of matrix texture builder just in and around the face, head back gorgeous. Just to give us some grip. Yep. This is amazing. Literally just a drop. Ooh, almost dropped it. don't want to make it too neat, too contrived, we want it to look authentic, like you've done it yourself. Let's get rid of this, so we can see it without, just pull that. Just slide it over your shoulders, you don't need to stand up. Arms out, spin you back around. I think it's great. What do you I think? It. It's just got that nice movement now. Like before, it was was too much one length. It was a little bit. I know it was like a triangle shape. Whereas this now is it's more. I think it's way more flattering for your face shape. It's really nice. Yeah, it's beautiful. Leave these soft. We don't want to make this look too done. Style fixer. Eyes closed. Mainly just a little bit around the front, just so we can lock that shape in a little bit. Well that just like just right on those beautiful cheeks, huh? <laughs> just goes bing, just opens the face up. Cool. Happy? Very you happy. Look good. Thank you. Thanks, guys, uh, for tuning in today. Um, thank you, Emma Kate. Sorry. Off to work now. You're going to look amazing. <laughs> um, if you guys have any questions, please leave them at the bottom of the video. Don't forget to subscribe, and we will be back very soon with another episode. Thanks.